أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This is your host Fazal Ahmed I'll be presenting to you a series of documentaries on Khilafat Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Fazal Ahmed. I am Nazim Exhibition, in charge of national exhibitions of the U.S. Jamaat and also the historian of the Jamaat in America. We welcome you to the exhibition this year. We have been preparing exhibitions since 1989 when Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabi Rahimullah introduced this concept here in the United States. This particular exhibition is a broader vision of Khilafat. And now, Every person who has been to the exhibition has been given a flyer and it describes to you the journey to peace and progress and prosperity to the messengers of God. And as you know, this is the Khilafat Centennial Celebration Exhibition, a presentation of pictorial work of what and how mankind in this journey through the ages benefited from messengers of Allah. Now, we will begin with God. We'll present different ways, pictorial artwork, God, His attributes, his message, the paths that lead to God Almighty, his favors on mankind through his messengers. We first of all give ayat istikhlaf. That and the rest of the ayah is, are men, is mentioned here. And the different categories of khulafa, khulafa who are prophets such as Adam and David, khulafa who are prophets of another greater prophet, Israeli prophets who are khulafa of Moses, that's an example, and non-prophet khulafa of a prophet like khulafa Rashidin or khulafa Ahmadiyya. His messengers, that have been mentioned here. I have mentioned just a few but covered more. And this also is the floor chart of the map of the exhibition as it is laid down on the floor. So what is important here is to know that everybody who comes to the exhibition is aware of what he is going to see, the theme and the layout of the exhibition. So you would notice that we begin with Hadrat Adam al Islam and we go down to all the Prophets of Allah. The first one as we said are the attributes of God Almighty. We, will, we have also presented many DVDs and we have DVD stations where all the attributes have been put in a very colorful artwork. Sami, Basir, Rahman, Rahim and their translations have been presented here and there is a complete DVD that addresses all the attributes of the Almighty Allah. There was a divine law that was given to Hazrat Adam al -Islam, and the divine law was that every person has the right to be properly fed. The second is every person has a right to be adequately clothed and every person has a right to be guaranteed a supply of healthy water and none shall be left without shelter. Now that presupposes a number of things. Number one, it presupposes good food. That means there should have been agriculture. Number two, it presupposes clothing. It's not just a man that we are talking about, not the first man, but a whole series of civilized, advanced, cultural implements and tools. Do we have evidence to support this? And as I said, I'd like to take you back to the exhibit where this is supported. Once again, in a different format, we have presented here some of the findings that the modern research has revealed. That way back in 8000, agriculture had already begun in the Near East. And in 6000 BC, the earliest Neolithic settlements in Baluchistan, or the northwestern part of uh, the country, had already been done. And then the Indus Valley Civilization, which is uh, way back from 5000 to 4000 BC. Now, this demonstrates that the favors of God to mankind were not only in the spiritual realm, but they were also in the physical, geographical, agriculture, societal, administrative and other dimensions. That is why Hazrat Adam al-Islam was given this divine law which God had already prepared. The question here, a very important question is whether these great advancements in arts and sciences and agriculture and clothing, 
textile industry had taken place at the time of Hazrat Adam al-Islam or before that? And my answer to that question is, as it is demonstrated here, that for instance, Hazrat Adam al-Islam, as we know, came in 4000 BC, which is 6000 years from now. But agriculture had already, been, had, had, had already taken place, advances in agriculture, such as the silk worm for the textile industry and the wheat had already been developed way back in 8000. Uh, what does that prove? That means uh, under the Sift al Rahmaniyat, as much as a mother is given milk before the birth of a child and she is already prepared to take the child in, S therefore, before the coming of Adam, Adam, Adam and Islam, because he was to be given those divine laws of the guarantee of uh, food and water and all those other great things that we enjoy today, these this establishes, clearly establishes and demonstrates to us the favors of God on mankind, both in the spiritual, uh, spiritual as well as the uh, um, physical as well as spiritual dimension. Now, the tree here, as the Khalif al Sani demonstrates, the trees of do's and don'ts. And this is again a divine favor. It's the beginning of laws. Also, the Exodus demonstrates the consequences of actions, as we had already mentioned to you. And the consequences of actions are that they, will, they lived in paradise, Adam and Eve. And yet, when they did not follow the instructions of God, then they were followed up with the consequence. A favor of God, do astaghfar, and Allah will give you much better than you had before. So this is a demonstration. And another, another great thing was this institution of marriage. Hazrat Khalif al Sadis, Sani Rizatana says, that the institution of marriage in some rudimentary form was introduced at the time of Hazrat Adam al-Islam. Now these are some of the spiritual as well as the physical blessings, societal blessings, shall we say, that were given to society as a favor of God to mankind through the Messenger of Allah. Now, important question. We know all that a Noah, Noah, Prophet Noah, what prepared the ark. It presupposes a few industries. The first industry it presupposes a carpentry because the, the ark was made out of wood. Number two, it was made of nails. So it pre presupposes the coming of the metal age and it also presupposes advances in shipbuilding. It wasn't that Hazrat Noah Islam was the first shipbuilder, but it means that the in industry had already taken done. That's a favor of God. This was the broader vision of our Amir Saab when he presented the idea and said this is how the occupation is going to evolve around. Now what about the deluge itself? It is said that the deluge, which is the destruction of man because they didn't adhere or, or rejected the messenger of God, didn't adhere to his message repeatedly. In spite of those great favors of God, the lesson and the favor of God is that if you reject the messenger of God, then you will receive a punishment. Now, that applies in the modern age, as you know, Hazrat Masih Ma'ud al-Islam is the Noah of the age. And he too has constructed an ark, but for a civilized society now, which is the, uh, with the teachings of uh, Hazrat Masih Ma'ud al-Islam. Now, in the case of uh, Prophet Jonah, what is the favor of God on mankind? The favor of God on mankind, simply stated in this case, is that if a society collectively uh, uh, re make, uh, repents, if a society collectively rep repents, God forgives them. And that is the key. And when I talk to my American, my American colleagues, they entirely agree with me that it is collective. And they say that they have been collectively repenting, especially now in the days of high gas prices. Oh Lord Almighty, just please forgive us for all our sins so that this great thing that is happening to destroy our economic life is taken away from me. May Allah accept their prayers and our prayers for their spiritual will me. Now, talk about Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam. In the case of Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam, he is the father of, father of nations. Now, from the, the Judeo-Christian background, he has a progeny from Hazrat Ishaq, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, all the way down to Hazrat Isa al-Islam. And this includes the northern and the southern kingdoms of the Bani Israelites. And the other one that there is Hadrat, through Hazrat Ismail al-Islam, Hazrat Ismail al-Islam, that culminates in the coming of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu This particular genealogy or table of genealogy was, was made by Hazrat uh, Mirza Bashir, Bashir Ahmad Sahib Rajilan Khabar al -Ambiya. And people have been fans, the mayor of Harrisburg who came, he said, this is the first thing I want in my office because I would like people to know that he was indeed the father of nations. So you have the Judeo-Christian on this side and the Islam uh, uh, background here. Another part which is very important about the Ibrahim al-Islam is Muqami Ibrahim. Muqami Ibrahim is the bad 
uh, is why is Jalna al Bayt al Nas? Now, this discussion is drawn from Sayyid al Rahani. As if Khalifa al Masih Asani makes a great point in that, the point is that nobody can, all the world cannot go to one spot to offer their prayer, which is Muqami Ibrahim in a physical sense. This Muqami Ibrahim is a blessing for all mankind. It is for all mankind, it is a source of guidance for all to unite people together, together to, prom, to protect them from all harm, to establish peace and security for all, and to keep and maintain imamat. He, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Sani goes on to say that this, these are the attributes of a mosque, not just Muqami Ibrahim. And since the whole world is a mosque and a place of worship, we should turn this whole mosque as Ahmadis as Muqami Ibrahim and show that it's not just the mosque where all these attributes are presented but we should present and carry these attributes and demonstrate them ourselves in our character. As the Musa al -Islam was given a number of favors and first one was uh, again these are all the past that lead to God and come, uh, coming under the rubric the umbrella of Khilafat God's favors Moses was brought into, into in a royal environment and also went through severe hardships. Moses was favored with signs of God and miracles. And God also taught him special prayers. And the societal changes. Let's talk about the favors of God in terms of societal changes. One, Bani Israelites were enslaved. Pharaohs were haughty, arrogant, cruel, and depraved. Now, how does the favor of God descend upon society? In the Holy Quran, in chapter 28, verses 6 and 7, God Almighty says, addressing the, the, the time of Hazrat Musa al -Islam, to all mankind, that we desire to show favor unto those who had been considered weak in the earth and to make them leaders and make them inheritors of our favors and to establish them in the earth and to show Pharaohs and Haman and their hosts that which they feared. This is a special favor of God on mankind through the messenger of Allah in this case of the Musa al -Islam. Now we present that as in the form of societal conditional and resources attainment. Now let's talk about society. Favors of God we should remember are not particular to that prophet but to the era, so that the message that is being delivered to the Prophet and the entire story that is being narrated through the message is presented in a way in which the favors of God are demonstrated to the people. Now, Pharaohs, as we know, in the time of Pharaohs, the Egyptians had attained a high degree of cultural advancements, including a reformed way of writing, that was number one, and that's a great advancement, and that was very important because something was to happen at the time of Hazrat Musa al -Islam as a spiritual favor of God for which, the, for which God Almighty had already prepared the society which was good writing, good writing skills. So now these writings had already been developed at the time of Hazrat Musa al -Islam. and we'll talk about how these were then utilized. This is number one. Number two, he had to face the army of the pharaohs and the might of the pharaohs. So that means there were armies, there were military strength soldiers training and all that and these are important favors of God to mankind for the defense of a nation and these had been given to the to, to the to the Egyptians at that time so it, but we want to tell you something Moses was bestowed with the victory after victory both over Pharaohs as well as his people he took the Bani Israelites across the Red Sea to safety freeing them from the tyrant Pharaohs and his forces were drowned and God saved the tyrant body for, for his last play so God's favor, number through, through Moses, God Almighty favored the society and changed their condition from bondage to freedom. This is number one, two. And bestowed upon them things that they desired. And I have here some of the things that the Bani Israelites desired. Here's a picture of a quail. And this is a favor not just to Hazrat Musa al-Islam and the Bani Israelites, but it is more for all mankind. So you see how important it is for us to have a broader vision of Khilafat as a messenger of God being bestowed with things that are useful for everybody in the society. Here um, is the quail and here is the mushroom. These are things that the Bani Israelites wanted. Now, they wanted, they had been enslaved for too long and therefore they had become a very suppressed society and their character needed to be improved. So God gave them a, a set of commandments. Now, here is another uh, demonstration of a favor of God um, through Hazrat Musa al-Islam the Ten Commandments. Now in the Holy Quran in chapter 700 verse 146 and we wrote for them upon the tablets and everything an admonition, uh, an admonishment and an explanation of all things. These are the Ten Commandments. Yesterday when the mayor of Harrisburg came 
and we explained to them and talked to them about the Ten Commandments. He said they are so good that it would be very difficult for me to pass in the legislature in Hasburg any one of those commandments. And the most important, you shall have no other God before me. That's the first commandment. La ilaha illallah. And this is a very important thing for all people to share. And they immediately agree with you that if the Holy Quran says La ilaha illallah and the first commandment also says you shall have no other God before me, you have established a common platform for people to share the same thought. The prediction of Hazrat Musa al-Islam on the coming of the Holy Prophet and the analysis of that prophecy which is given in Deuteronomy verses 32, uh, 30, chapter 32 verse 2. And we know this is a great prophecy, but I'll just explain to you the important parts. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose from Sair unto them. And he shined forth from Mount Paran and he came with 10,000 saints from his right hand, went forth a fiery law. And we explained to him where Paran is, which is Saudi Arabia, which is Arabia. The 10,000 saints are the Sahaba of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu at the fall of Mecca. And the fiery law is Surah Fatiha. And we explained that through the years, that I have been dealing in. Now, what are the views of God and Hazrat Isa al Islam? In the, in the case of Hazrat Isa al Islam, first of all, the Bani Israelites who had been given the Ten Commandments had become a very harsh society from being a very humble one. And the law was an eye for an eye and, uh, and a tooth for a tooth, sometimes an eye for a tooth. Well, they had to be toned down. And so the message of Hazrat Isa al Islam as a favor of God to society was love, turn the other cheek. This is the first one. Second one is this, uh, in Surah Al Maida, Kala Isab no Mariama, Allah Marabana Anzil Elena Mai, the Tamina Samai, Takuna, and Aida Level, and Awakin, and Wayatum in Kavarzukta, one to Hiru Rajatin. This is so clearly demonstrated in Costco and Sam and the great grocery stores we have in America filled with the riches of Maida, which was the prayer of God on behalf of the disciples and that has been continuously being fulfilled as a favor of God on mankind through the messenger of God in this case Hazrat Isa al Islam. Hazrat Isa al Islam also talked about the, predicted the coming of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and this is the great prophecy of the Comforter which is given in John 16 verses 7 to 14. And I have analyzed here and it's a very important prophecy and it says it is expedient for you that I go away, I go to my father and you, see, you shall see me no more and if I go not away, the comforter will not come. He shall teach you all the things and the spirit of truth will guide you unto all truth. And we talk about that, that great message that the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu brought. Now Islam's teachings are followed by the nations of the world as the Khalifat al-Masih Arabi Rahmullah states in this case are fully capable of saving them from strife and destruction. And Huzul goes on to say Islam is a living faith and claims to be able to place the relationship of man with God on the same plane as it was in the days long past. We quote here Hazrat Masih Maudalah Islam and that message is presented here in this beautiful thing which begins with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah there is none worthy of worship except Allah Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Islam what does it mean? The technical meaning of Islam, Hazrat Masih Maud al-Islam says, is the truth is that whoever submits himself completely to the will of Allah and acts righteously shall have his reward with his Lord. Holy Quran, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 113. This is from the promise of Musa al-Islam. And we go on to explain the religion of Islam that has been bestowed by God. What is, who is the God in Islam and what are his attributes? The Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam is the seal of the prophets. The Holy Quran in chapter 33 verse 41 says, Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets, and Allah has full knowledge of all things. In a book written by Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Rabi Rahimullah, it's a brochure. It says, with love to the Muslims of the world, page 33, quote, Ahmadi Muslims believe the holy founder of Islam to be Khatam al nabiin in every sense of the word. He is Khatam the best of all the prophets of Allah. He is the possessor of the seal of prophets. Without his certification, no one on earth will be considered to be a true prophet. In this exhibit we have the Kalama, beautifully written, a calligraphy again of Hadi Ali Chaudhry Sahib, and below it a panoramic view of Masjid al-Nabwi. Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, 
May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. The Holy Quran in chapter 33 verse 22 says, You have in the Messenger of Allah an ex excellent example for him who hopes to meet with Allah on the last day and who remembers Allah much. God Almighty shows the two types of powers for the completion of the mission of his prophets, one in the life of the prophets themselves and the other after their demise and thus. He takes their mission and community in his special care for a long time and advances and completes their mission. The five Rashidin, the first one, Hazrat Abu Bakr born in 572 Christian era in Mecca, a period of Khilafat from 632 AD to 634 AD. His father's name was Abu Qahafa and his mother Umay Khair Salma. He was a cloth merchant. He was a very close friend of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was the first to confirm the truth of the claim of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He earned the title of Siddiq, he was fully devoted to the service of Islam all his life and he was with the Holy Prophet when they took refuge at the Cave of Sor on their journey from Mecca to Medina. The first in financial sacrifices, some significant achievements of his Khilafat internally collected and preserved the documents of the Holy Quran, reorganized the Hufaz, suppressed politically motivated rebe rebellion, corrected problems of people not paying zakat, put down rebellion of false or pretender prophets externally. He crushed the rebellion in Bahrain and defeated the Persians and the Romans, and Syria entered into the fold of Islam in his time. Hazrat Umar Farooq, born 581 Christian era in Mecca, period of Khilafat from 634 A.D. to 644 A.D., significant achievements of his Khilafat internally. Excellent system of state administration was established including Department of Finance, schools and mosques. Establishment of the Islamic calendar, the Islamic welfare state was established, Majlis Ashura, which is the consultative advisory body to the Khalifa was established externally. During the period of his Khilafat, Muslims were forced to fight defensive battles against Iran, Iraq, Syria and Egypt. Jerusalem was conquered by the Muslims in the 17th Hijra. On the request of the Romans he signed a treaty between the Muslims and the people of Jerusalem. Hazrat Hafsa, daughter of Hazrat Umar, was married to the Holy Prophet Muhammad in 624 after her former husband passed away. In Khulafai Rashidin, the third one, Hazrat Usman Ghani Razilan Ho, born 581 AD in Mecca, period of Khilafat from 644 AD to 6. 56 AD, fourth to accept Islam, migrated to Abyssinia and Medina. He was known as Zinnuran, the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, married his daughter Rukhaya to him and after she passed away gave his second daughter Umm Kulsum to him in marriage. He was one of the Ashrai Mubashir. Some significant achievements of his Khilafat include internally copies of the Holy Quran compiled by Hazrat Abu Bakr were standardized and distributed in his time, sacrificed his wealth for Islam, it was an era of peace and prosperity, the army was strengthened and Islamic navy was established externally, crushed the rebellion, rebellion in Iran, the Romans were defeated again, Romans faced naval defeat on their way to capture Egypt, all of Asia Minor Iran and Egypt were embraced Islam in his time. He refused to step down from the godly bestowed Khilafat and also refused to fight so as to avoid shedding of Muslim blood when rebels entered Medina. He sacrificed his life for safeguarding Khilafat. Hazrat Ali Razilanho was born around 590 AD. His period of Khilafat from 656 to 661 AD. He was son of Abu Talib who was the uncle of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu His father and mother took care of the Holy Prophet in his childhood. When Meccans planned to kill the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Hazrat Ali stayed behind. The Meccans found him instead of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in his bed but could not get any information from him. Their plan to murder the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu failed. Hazrat Ali was married to Lady Fatima, the daughter of the Holy Prophet Muhammad He was a great warrior who fought in all battles along with the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Very intelligent man, pious and a great scholar. Significant events of his uh, Khilafat. He moved the capital from Medina to Kufa, Baghdad on account of lawlessness in Medina. He refused to comply with those who demanded that Hazrat Umar's murderers be punished. But he wanted to restore law and order in Medina first. 
those who made this demand were defeated by him at the Battle of Jamal in 656 AD. Then, Hazrat Ali met Amir Muawiyah's forces at the Battle of Safan in Syria. The accord reached after arbitration ended in failure. Hazrat Ali defeated the Khawaraj, uh, those who were not in favor of arbitration, while going for Fajr prayers, the Khawaraj attacked him and wounded him. He died two days later. He too sacrificed his life for safeguarding the institution of Khilafat in Islam. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Muhammad, the promised Messiah, founder of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community, was born on 13 February 1835 in Qadian, which is a small town in northern India, a town which totally lacked all modern facilities of communication with the rest of the world. The aggressive and often offensive Christian and Hindu polemics against Islam and its Prophet وسلم, was a matter of deep concern and agony for Hazrat Ahmad. He was extremely distressed by the vulgarity of the adversaries of Islam and the pitiable state of the Muslim religious scholars and masses who were unable to defend the honor of their prophet and the glory of their faith. Hazrat Masimud al-Salaam began to receive divine revelation from God Almighty at the age of 40 and discontinued till his last breath. Hazrat Masimud al-Salaam claimed to be the promised reformer whose advent was awaited under different names and titles by the adherents of various religions. Under divine guidance, Hazrat Masih Maud revealed that not only was such a reformer to appear and that his mission was to bring mankind to the fold of a single universal religious Islam. He also maintained that the promised reformer was to appear as a subordinate and a follower of the Holy Prophet Muhammad in accordance with the prophecies by him about the second coming of Messiah and the appearance of Al-Imam in al -Mah. He claimed to be the person in whom these prophecies were fulfilled. On March 23, 1889, Hazrat Masih Maud laid the foundations of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. The signs mentioned in the Old Scriptures and the Holy Quran indicated that the promised Messiah would complete the task of re-establishing the superiority of Islam over all other faiths. In Hazrat Muhammad Islam, these prophecies were indeed fulfilled. He firmly established the superiority of Islam over all other faith. He passed away on 26th May 1908 in Lahore. Exhibit relating to the ac accomplishments of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih I. He consolidated and strengthened the institution of Khilafat. He established the Bayt al Mal or the treasury. He founded Madrasa Ahmadiyya and he laid the foundation stone of Masjid Noor. The Ansarullah Anjuman was set up by Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad who became, became Khalif al Masih II later. He established the Ahmadiyya newspaper Al Fazl and this was in 1913. And the first Ahmadiyya foreign mission was established in London. And then we begin with Hadrat Khalifa al Masih Asani. Here we describe his background and then his achievements. 1925, Darul Qaza, 1928, Jamia Ahmadiyya. And a picture, some of the pictures are both overseas and some of the pictures of things that have happened that have brought Ahmadiyya into America. 1938, uh, 1934, Tariq al Jadid. 1938, Majlis Qudam al and at Fawlur Ahmadiyya, 1940, Nasratul Ahmadiyya, and we have some photographer from Fawa, early photo. This poster demonstrates all the different countries of the world that were, to which Ahmadiyya had spread under the program of Tariq al -Jadid. Now, this is a very important space, space statement made by Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Sani about Khilafat in his book called Barakat e Khilafat. For you, there is a well wisher who loves you and shares your woes and afflictions and prays for you before God. Other people have none other like this available to them. Huzur says, your Khalifa is concerned about your welfare and intercedes with God on your behalf while others have none to do this for them. This is the, the masterpiece of Hazrat Khalifa al Sani, the great Israel Anho, um, Tafsir Kabir, the five volume commentary as we call them. And down here in that chapter, in, the, in chapter one, Hazrat, Masih, Hazrat Khalifa al Sani presents a wonderful scheme of the attributes of Allah and I have put it in, in, a, in a way in which scheme in the sense schema is, is the, it would be an appropriate term. Allah, Rabbul Alameen, Rahman Rahim, Maliki Umdeen. These are the five 
different attributes of God Almighty in Surah Fatiha. Then we have prayers. Hazrat Khalifa al Sani makes this beautiful connection between each attribute of God and Iyakan and the prayer. Now this is the masterpiece on which this exhibition is based, Sari Rohani, the collection of lectures of Hazrat Khalifa al Sani that began in 1938 all the way to 1958 and everything that has been presented is based upon an exploration, research and guidance of Sari Rohani. We begin with Hazrat Khalifa al the third. May Allah shower his mercies upon him. Accomplishments, early life. He memorized the Holy Quran at age 13. Got a Master's of uh, Arts in Tripos. Tripos from Oxford University. He was a graduate of Government College Lahore. Professor and later principal of Jamani Ahmadiyya, Southern Jaman Ahmadiyya and Khudamul Ahmadiyya. He participated in action as part of the Furqan Force Battalion for Pakistan Army. He was principal of the college from 1944 to 1965 and he was also the Sadr of Sadr Ahmadiyya from 1955 to 1965. Continuing with the accomplishments of Hazrat Khalif al masih the third, um, there is the Waqfi Arvi Azi scheme uh, which was for short term dedication, the Talimul Islam, uh, Talim Quran scheme for learning the Holy Quran. Um, successful presentation of the Ahmadiyya beliefs at Pakistan National Assembly in 1974. Successfully refuting the false, false charges leveled against Ahmadiyya Jamaat. Leadership of the Jamaat during the period of intense persecution. Establishment of uh, Majlis Emusian in the Jamaat. Translation of the Holy Quran in Esperanto. A Nusra Jahan Leap Forward uh, scheme was established clinics and medical centers and 70 schools in Africa, Ahmadiyya Secondary School at Rockpore, Rockpore, Sierra Leone, and many other schools in Africa. It would take a long time to just go through them. Accomplishments including hospitals in Sierra Leone, in Ghana, Gambia, and Nigeria. Continuing with Hazrat Khalif al the third achievements of his Khilafat, the Fazli Umar Foundation to continue, continue to fund uh, Hazrat Muslim Maud Razalatano's project, the Nusra Jahan scheme for long term humanita humanitarian efforts in West Africa, including opening of 100 schools, clinics, and hospitals. Students were sent for higher education overseas. Educational institutions and administrative buildings and hundreds of mosques were established throughout the world. Masjid Aqsa was uh, established and, and uh, constructed and opened in, uh, inaugurated in Ravwa, Basharat Mosque in Spain. Huzur visited uh, Europe, America, countries in Asia, Africa to organize, meet and exhort members of the Jamaat. We begin with the accomplishments of uh, Hazrat Khalifa al the fourth, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may Allah shower his mercies upon him, not necessarily in a chronological order. Translations of the Holy Quran in 64 languages and selected verses of the Holy Quran in 116 languages. We have pictures of some of them here. Magnific magnificent uh, accomplishment as Hazrat Khalif al Masih was the establishment of the MTA. And here we have the MTA showing the Friday sermon of Hazrat Khalif al Masih Khamis, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al Aziz, and the Jalsa Salana in 2008. So since then, this wonderful Muslim television Ahmadiyya has been spreading the message of Ahmadiyya throughout the world. Uh, in 1982, under a $2.5 um, program, mosques in Los Angeles. And the mosque in Los Angeles is right here in New York, which is Bath Zephyr right there. And the mosque in Detroit, Chicago, and Masjid Bath Rahman in Washington, D.C. Then, a fulfillment of Hazrat Masih Maud al-Salatu prophecy of 1898. Kings shall seek blessings from thy garments. Three kings of Nigeria joined Ahmadiyyat in April in 1987. Two kings from Benin joined Ahmadiyyat in 2002. And uh, of them, they had jurisdiction over 200 other local kings. And these kings attended the Jalsa Salana in UK in 1998. A set of accomplishments of Hazrat Khalif al Masih the fourth. May Allah shower his mercies upon him. Mosques built around the world increased from 1090, 1090 to 11,367. 
100 mosques in Germany, Kenya, and Tanzania. And we have only a sample of them shown on these. We could go on and on for many exhibits to show these. And we have a little video that we'll show to you on, this, uh, on, the, on the mosques that were built during his time. For the first time, the centennial of Jalsa Salana took place in Qadian in 1991. We celebrated 100 years of uh, uh, the Jalsa Salana from 1891 to 1991. First ever visit of Khalifa al Masih to Qadian since 1947. 25,000 people attended from all over the world. Here is a picture, a set of pictures of people attending that beautiful, great occasion. And has Huzur at the tomb of, uh, at the shrine of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wasalam, at the maqbara of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wasalam. Another set of accomplishments is the number of countries in Ahmadiyya. Beginning of Khilafat, there were 80. At the end, 175. Buyutul Hamd, 100 houses for the poor were established in Rabwa, Pakistan. Waqfa Jadid scheme expanded on a worldwide scale. Another set of accomplishments, under the title of the Da'i Ilallah scheme, which was started in 1983. There were many projects that were launched under the umbrella of this scheme. Of this scheme. All members joined in calling people of the world, of all nations, colors and creeds towards Allah. Um, 1987. 5,000 newborn children dedicated by parents. 2003, there were 24,355 children dedicated to the scheme of Waqfin and Now. Coming to the time of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih the fifth, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, may Allah grant him strength, Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr Aziz, early life. He was a missionary in Ghana and uh, he, had, he has a master's in agricultural economics. He's the founding principal of the Ahmadiyya Secondary School in Salaga, Ghana. In the Ahmadiyya Secondary School, Esayrkar, Ghana. He was the manager of the Ahmadiyya Agricultural Farm, Dipali, Ghana. Uh, and Ghana attained self-sufficiency in wheat in his time when he was there. He was in charge of the Department of Finance, Sadr Anjaman Ahmadiyya, Nazir Talim, Sadr Anjaman Ahmadiyya, Sadr Majlis e Karpur Daz, Nazir Allah, Sadr Anjaman Ahmadiyya, Chairman of the Nasir Foundation. He was the president of the body that was responsible for the beautification of uh, Ravwa, it was a committee. He was the member of the Qadha board and he was Naib Sadr Qudam al Ahmadiyya of Pakistan. He was a Qaid of Zahanat, Health and Talimul uh, Quran, Madhulis and Sarullah Pakistan, Amir e Muqami of Pakistan, and he was a prisoner in the name of Allah uh, from 30th April to 10th May 1999. Again, more ca accomplishments of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih the fifth. Building of mosques and mission houses continued around the world. Hazrat Khalifa al Masih frequently traveled worldwide. Greets and meets demands, grants collective as well as individual family audiences, replies to each and every person who writes to him and fervently prays for every member of the Jamaat, publication of Khutbat Mansur, a compendium of his sermons and conditions of bed, more accomplishments of Hazrat Khalifatul Masih, the Fed, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad. May Allah grant him strength. Tahirat Institute opened in Rabwa, Strength and Humanity First International, which became an NGO which means a non-government organization, which provides a disaster relief in Asia, Asia and Africa, expansion and accelerated progress in the following areas, millions of tasks of Khilafat Ahmadiyyat, Huzur governed the functions, performance, decisions of the MTA, Sadr Anjuman Ahmadiyya, Tariq Jadid, Waqf Jadid, Darul Qadha, Waqf Arzi, Talim Al-Quran, Waqf Nenao Schemes, Dain Allah, Buyut al Ham, Maryam Marriage Fund, Majlis Ashura at the national and, and the international level, for Hazrat Khalifa al Masih the fifth, these are ongoing governing accomplishments, including governing the role, function, and performance of uh, of Madlis Khulam and Ahmad, Ahmadiyya, Adfalul Ahmadiyya, Nasratul Ahmadiyya, Allah's name Allah and Sarullah, Jamia Mubashirin in in Qadian, in um, in Rabwa, Ghana, and Canada. Talim Islam schools in Rabwa, Ahmadiyya secondary schools in Africa, libraries across the world, hospitals and clinics across the world. Research and publishing houses across the world. Um, the Fazl Umar Foundation publications and translations of the Holy Quran are ongoing at a tremendous pace, and numbers of hadiths are hadiths are being translated and published. Many many newspapers are growing all over the world under the rubric of uh, Khilafat. Uh, organa, or, many organs in journals and monthly magazines, brochures, souvenirs, books and online publications are in progress at this time as we speak.
एक वक्त आएगा कि कहेंगे तुम आम दो के उस विदाई से राम करे एक वक्त आएगा कि कहेंगे तुम आम दो के उस विदाई से राम करे حضرت خلیفت المسید فرست مولانا الحاج حکیم نور الدین رضی اللہ عنہ was born in 1841 in a village by the name of Behra in Sargoda district of India now Pakistan حضرت خلیفت المسید فرست may Allah be pleased with him was a descendant of حضرت عمر فاروق the second خلیفہ of Islam may Allah be pleased with him He was a great scholar who had quenched his thirst for knowledge by studying in practically all the famous religious institutions of the subcontinent and he had the privilege of learning and residing for a long time in the holy cities of Mecca and Medina. He was not only an expert theologian of his time, he was a great famous physician as well. When the Promised Messiah initiated the Ba'ad, On 23rd March 1889, Hazrat Al-Hajj Hakim Malwi Nuruddin was the first to owe allegiance to him. At the request of the Promised Messiah, and Mahdi Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, peace be upon him, Hazrat Khalif Al-Masih I settled in Qadian for the rest of his life and never again thought of returning to his ancestral home. Impressed by the dynamism of Islam as preached by the Promised Messiah al-Islam, Hazrat Khalif al-Masih I sacrificed all his material belongings for the sake of Islam. His life was certainly a great example of the triumph of faith over worldly gains. His obedience to the Promised Messiah was laudably praised by his beloved Master in the following words. How excellent if every one of my followers were Nuruddin. This is possible only when one's heart were illumined by the light of true, strong, and firm belief." Hazrat Khalif al-Masih I was elected to Khilafat Ahmadiyyat on the 27th of May 1908. Among his great achievements were the consolidation and strengthening of the institution of Khilafat. He established the Bayt al-Mal of the other treasury, founded the Madrasa Ahmadiyya, and laid the foundation stone of Majid al-Nur. Anjuman Ansarullah was set up during his period of time by, by Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmad, who later became Hazrat Muslim Aud Razilanho. The Ahmadiyya newspaper, Al Fazl, which we read today all over the world, was also founded during this time. And in 1913, the first Ahmadiyya foreign mission was established in London. Hazrat Khalif Tul Masih I, Maulan Al Haj Hakim Nurdin Razilanho, passed away in 1940. Thank you. 
کرو اے آسمانی بادشاہ کے مشی کرو اے آسمانی بادشاہ کے مشی کرو ایک دفعہ پھر اس نوبت کو زور سے بتاؤ کہ دنیا کے کام کھڑ جائے ایک دفعہ پھر اپنے دن کے خون اس کرے نالے بھر دو ایک دفعہ پھر اپنے دن کے خون اس کرے نالے بھر دو کہ ہر اس کے کام مر جائے ایک دفعہ پھر اپنے دن کے خون اس کرے نالے بھر دو کہ ہر اس کے کام مر جائے ہر اس کے بجا مجھے کہ تمہاری درد نا کراز ہو تمہارے نارے تکبیر اور تمہارے نارے تشریف سے شہادت ہے اس کا تحزید کی وجہ سے خدا تعالیٰ آسمان سے زمین پر آ جائے اور پھر خدا کی بادشاہ سے زمین پر آ جائے اسی غرض کے لیے میں نے تحریک جدید کو جاری کیا ہے اور اسی غرض کے لیے میں تمہیں وقت کی تبلیغ تعلیم دیتا ہوں ادھر آؤ اور خدا کے سپاہیوں میں داخل ہو محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا تخت آج مسیح نے چینا ہوا ہے تم نے مسیح سے چین کر پھر وہ تخت محمد رسول اللہ کو دینا ہے اور محمد رسول اللہ نے وہ تخت خدا جانے پر کرنا ہے اور خدا کی بادشاہ دنیا مقام ہے میری سوئے اور میری بات کے پیچھے چلو کہ میں جو کچھ کہہ رہا ہوں وہ خدا کہہ رہا ہے میری آواز نہیں ہے میں خدا کے آوازوں کو بجا رہا ہوں تو میری مانو خدا تمہارے ساتھ ہو خدا تمہارے ساتھ ہو خدا تمہارے ساتھ ہو اور تمہارے دنیا میں بھی عزت پاؤ اور آخر میں بھی عزت پاؤ اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر ان کے حقوق ان سے چینے جا رہے ہیں 
اللہ تعالیٰ انہوں نے صحیح استعمال کی توفیق عطا کرے اپنے سلائی کر دی اور اللہ تعالیٰ ان کو ان کے حقوق دلائے اور ان کی ان کے جسم بھی راحت اور خوشی محسوس کرے اور ان کی ارواح بھی خدا تعالیٰ کے پیار اور ان میں مطلوب رہے اور خدا تعالیٰ کے اس پیار کی لذت وہ بھی محسوس کرے the name of Allah and sing his praises for his innumerable bounties that Jamaat Ahmadiyya is celebrating the year 1989 as the Thanksgiving centenary year. On this auspicious occasion, I most humbly and sincerely invite, invite all my fellow human beings to study the Ahmadiyya movement in Islam seriously and to join his fold. I call upon God who is all-knowing, ever-present, as my witness that the message of Ahmadiyyad is nothing but truth. It is Islam in its pristine purity. The salvation of mankind depends on accepting this religion of peace. Islam is the religion which does away with all discrimination between man and man and demolishes all barriers of race, color and creed which divide humanity today. Islam liberates man from the bondage of sin and strengthens his ties with his creator. It is a religion so simple yet so highly organized to meet the demands and challenges of the ever-changing world. Islam permits no exploitation, be it social, political, economic or religious. The political philosophy of Islam has no room for false or deceptive diplomacy. It believes in absolute morality and enjoins justice and fairness to friends and foes alike in every sphere of human interest. Islam neither permits coercion for the spread of its own message nor gives license to other religions to do so. Indulgence in terrorism, even in the name of the noblest objectives, is entirely incompatible with the teachings of Islam. It is the firm belief of Jamaat Ahmadiyya that Islam is the panacea for all maladies and ailments of suffering humanity today. Islam teaches us that unless man learns to live at peace with himself and with his fellow human beings, he can never learn to live in peace with God, at peace with God. It is to this Islam بس 
یہ بظاہر جو چھوٹے چھوٹے طوفان اور زلزلے ایک تسلسل کے ساتھ اس سال دنیا میں آئے ہیں ان سے عبرت حاصل کرنی چاہیے مغرب کو بھی اور مشرق کو بھی اور ہر مذہب والے کو مسلمانوں کو بھی اور دوسرے مذہب کے ماننے والوں کو بھی اس بات کو سوچیں اور وجہ تلاش کریں کہ کیوں خدا کا عزب بڑھ کر ہے آواز دینے والے کی اس آواز پر غور کریں جواب نے فرمایا تھا کہ اگر میں نہ آیا ہوتا تو بلاؤں میں تاخیر ہو جاتی بس اگر ان بلاؤں سے بچنا ہے تو اس آنے والے کی آواز پر مسلمانوں کو بھی غور کرنا ہوگا اور عیسائیوں کو بھی غور کرنا ہوگا اور دوسرے مذاہب والوں کو بھی غور کرنا ہوگا اور لا مذہب جو ہیں ان کو بھی غور کرنا ہوگا ورنہ پھر آواز دینے والے کا یہ اعلان بھی ہے کہ اے یورپ تو بھی امن میں نہیں اور اے ایشیا تو بھی محفوظ نہیں اور اے جزائر کے رہنے والوں کوئی مصنوعی خدا تمہاری مدد نہیں کرے گا میں شہروں کو گرتے دیکھتا ہوں اور آبادیوں کو ویران پاتا ہوں وہ واحد یہ گانا ایک مدت تک خاموش رہا اور اس کی آنکھوں کے سامنے مکرو کام کیے گئے اور وہ چپ رہا مگر اب وہ حیبت کے ساتھ اپنا چہرہ دکھلائے گا جس کے کان سننے کے ہوں سنے کہ وہ وقت دور نہیں میں نے کوشش کی کہ خدا کی امان کے نیچے سب کو جمع کروں پھر آپ فرماتے ہیں خدا غزب میں دھیما ہے توبہ کرو تا تم پر رحم کیا جائے جو خدا کو چھوڑتا ہے وہ کیڑا ہے نہ کہ آدمی اور جو اس سے نہیں ڈرتا وہ مردہ ہے نہ کہ زندہ بس یہ پیغام ہے جو دنیا میں ہر اہم دین آج دینا ہے دنیا کو بکا کے لیے دنیا کو بچانے کے لیے اللہ تعالی ہمیں بھی خدا کی حقیقی پہچان کی توفیق دے اور دنیا کو بھی اس واحد خدا کی پہچان کرنے والا بنائے تا اس واحد واحد جگان اور یگانہ خدا کے عذاب کے بجائے اس کے رحم کو حاصل کرنے والے ہم بن سکے